In today's world, people assume it's easier to drive down to McDonald's and pick up a burger rather than make themselves their own meals. In a few moments, we will prove them wrong and show you how you can impress your friends and family by making a cheap, fast, and healthy meal. Stay tuned, you're watching Cooking Easy with me, Justin Z. Welcome to another enticing episode of Cooking Easy. I'm your host, Justin Zabierski. Have you ever been at home and thought to yourself, man, I'm hungry, but I just don't know what to make? Today, we'll give you some ideas that'll help you decide. According to the late Mitch Hedberg, when you're hungry and you want 2,000 of something, fried rice is the only way to go. Helping us prepare this dish is a man who works at Studio Restaurant in Laguna Beach. Please help me welcome our guest, Chef Irving Nunez. How are you, Irving? I'm great, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to make a, uh, a stir-fried rice today, uh, but first I, I do want to establish you work at Studio Restaurant in Laguna Beach. That's yes, a five-star restaurant? Yes, it is. You must be very proud of that. I am. It's a great thing to be a part of. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so we're making stir-fried rice. Um, what are the ingredients we have here? The ingredients we have for the stir-fried rice uh, are broccoli, we have some brown mushrooms, we have some carrots, red peppers, and our aromatics that are going to help us bring some flavor to the dish, which are ginger, garlic, and scallion. Okay, great. Uh, those are green onions. Okay. Uh, now let's see, that, that seems like quite a few ingredients, but they're actually relatively inexpensive. Yeah, very inexpensive. You can find any at any supermarket down the street, very cheap, um, and really easy to prepare. Okay, great. Yeah. All so, right, so uh, what's the first step? Here? First thing we're going to do is add some broccoli and mushrooms. Uh, you want to spread them out so they cook evenly, get a nice hot pan going with some sesame oil. And okay, so sesame oil is in the pan, yeah. kind of preheated here. Yes. And uh, the broccoli and the mushrooms cook at, at relatively the relatively same time. Relatively around the same time, so you can go ahead and throw those in there. Okay, yeah, you can hear it get started there. And while that's going, I'm going to help you cut some vegetables as well, too. Okay. So I'll start peeling some carrots for you. And you want the broccoli and the mushrooms evenly throughout the pan. Yes, sir. Okay. You can season them with a little bit of salt, too. We're going to add some soy sauce to the dish, but the soy sauce, you don't want it to overwhelm too much, even though it does have a lot of sodium to it, okay. so, so I just we're going to season with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Okay, so you're cooking the carrots, you're, you're, you're cutting the carrots, those yeah. are very thinly sliced, you Very said? thinly sliced, yeah. What I'm doing is cutting them at an angle, so I get a longer piece, okay. and then I'll just fan them out like this. Okay, great. Now, what's the uh, next ingredient that I can put in the pan here? Next ingredient you can put in there are your peas. The peas. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to add some more green peas in there. Yeah, you can really smell the, uh, the, the flavor coming out yeah. in here. One thing I like about stir fried rice, too, is that you get some really good flavors going on because you cook at such a high temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, at home, your mom might cook some vegetables, steam them for you as a side to, for your dinner, and you don't really enjoy them that much because they're so, they're kind of dull. But once you cook at a high temperature and you get some browning like you do on your broccoli, your mushrooms, and your peas, you'll notice that different notes and tones of your vegetables will start coming out. And okay. it's a lot more pleasant, it's a lot more yes. enjoyable to eat. Sometimes when I try and saute, I end up either burning the vegetables <laughs> or, or I just get hotter than usual vegetables. Yeah. Uh, if it gets too hot, because uh, we can see the sesame oil around the side here, should we add more sesame oil? Yeah, uh, when you throw vegetables inside, uh, the oil will start to coat them and the bottom might get really dry. If that happens, go ahead and add some more. This is actually really good right now. It's just enough so they can move around, still get some good color, has okay. good flavor, but it, it's not very dry at the bottom. Okay, and so. we're gonna add the carrots now? Yep, yeah. and some peppers as and well. And some red pepper, okay. Gonna throw that in. The next thing I'm gonna cut for you is some ginger. Same thing, we're gonna slice it really thin. And I'm trying to keep everything even throughout the pan here. That's key. If you throw in a lot of vegetables at once, you've spent, let's say, 30 seconds getting your pan nice and hot. You throw in a bunch of cold vegetables and that temperature of the vegetables will bring down the temperature of your right. surface area. So if you throw in one by one, just let it climb, let it build, get some color, and then add 
more ingredients, it'll keep that uh, temperature high and it'll cook evenly as well. And while you're cutting that, I wanted to ask you uh, how you got your start in cooking. So I was in high school and I needed a way to keep myself focused mm -hmm. and I was around cooking my whole life. My family has a bunch of great cooks, but never thought of it as a career path or something I really enjoy doing for fun until high school. Uh, senior year, I started taking some classes at Saddleback, started doing some pastry work, then I worked at the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Nigel for a bit. Oh, wow. And ever since then, I got really into cooking. I went to New York for two years, studied, and I oh, just came okay. back recently and joined the team at studio. Wow, wow, that yeah. sounds exciting. Yeah. Got to see a couple different places there. I love it, yeah. Okay, so those are going pretty well. The carrots are cooking fast. I can smell that from here. Yeah. So that's really going to add a lot of flavor. And this is raw. Once it cooks down and breaks down, it'll just make the dish that much more exciting. Wonderful. Okay. And these, you'll notice that I cut really thinly. If you throw this in at the start of your dish, these pieces will cook a lot faster than those. Right. And it'll start to burn. So instead of getting that, like, that little aromatic uh, flavor of the ginger, garlic, and scallions to it, it'll burn it and it'll make it bitter. Right. So you want to finish the dish off. You want to get a nice even coating of oil, enough for, um, for the oil to actually like penetrate the garlic, and okay. it'll, it'll start to get really fragrant. So that's key. This okay. is the great way to finish off your dish. And it's completely optional as well. Some people might find it too complicating or something that they might not have at home, okay. but... Yeah, we're using only vegetables today, uh, but you could add some meats if, if you like, Definitely. or different flavors. Definitely. Yeah, it's a pretty versatile dish here. It's always good to know how to saute and add sauteed vegetables, it seems, to a lot of different recipes. Very simple. I don't want those to burn, so I'm gonna move those around. And then right before we add that, we're gonna make sure we get a little bit more heat in the pan. We're gonna mm -hmm. add some sesame oil and you can make a little hole around your vegetables because we're going to crack an egg in there. Okay, so we'll make a hole right there in the middle. Add some sesame oil. And you don't want the, the egg to burn, that's why you're adding the sesame oil? Yeah. Okay. There you go. So crack an egg right in the middle. Oh, okay. Perfect. Let me drop that in there. Now that egg is going to cook very fast. Yeah. Okay. So what you want to do is let it cook for a little bit and get a nice um, cooking surface on the bottom. And once it starts forming, you want to scramble it okay. and incorporate it with your vegetables. One thing you don't want to do though is scramble it too much and have it in the pan for too long. You barely want to cook it because you're still going to throw in your rice. It's going to finish cooking. And if you scramble it too much, you'll just get little tiny bits of eggs. Right. Something you can't really taste. It's just in there. But if you leave it whole and get chunky parts, it just makes the dish a little bit more exciting. Okay. That's perfect just like that. Great. And you want to add the rice in there? You want to throw in your ginger, garlic, and scallions right oh. before. I'm skipping steps here. <laughs> I'm getting too excited to eat this. There we go. Perfect. And then I always add a little bit of chili paste. Okay. Great. Chili paste. That's, That's probably good. good. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that definitely uh, changed the smell there. It's <laughs> a little spicier. And after you get that all mixed in, you can add your rice. Okay. And about how long did we take to, to cook the rice? Those the ten rice? Minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yes. Okay. What I did is I added a cup of a uh, cup of rice, two cups of water, bring it up to a boil, put your lid on, and just time it for ten minutes. And then if you're making a fried rice, a really cool thing is uh, to do is use your rice from the day before. So if your mom made rice or you made rice and you have it laying around at home, you'll start to notice that it, a lot of the moisture starts coming off and it gets really dry and sticky. That's perfect for fried rice because okay. the oil will make it crunchy. It'll give it some texture. It won't turn to mush when you incorporate it with your ingredients and just makes it a little bit more fun okay. to eat. It's pretty good. And then we'll finish it off with some soy sauce. Soy sauce, okay. And just a little bit of soy sauce there. This really does smell excellent. I'm, uh, I'm glad I haven't eaten breakfast yet. It's uh, 
Perfect. I can't wait to try this. Okay. Perfect. So, fried rice is almost done. All right. So we'll give that a go. I want to thank you for coming in. Thank it you was, very much. Uh, it was great. We appreciate it. That should wrap things up for us on today's show. I'd like to thank Chef Irving Nunez from Studio Restaurant in Laguna Beach for coming in today and showing us just how easy it is to make a great tasting meal. On behalf of all of us here at the studio, we'd like to extend our sincere gratitude to you at home for tuning in to another episode of Cooking Easy. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Now go get your ingredients and start cooking. <laughs> <laughs>